All right. We are one minute past, so I think we're going to get started. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us this Friday for November's edition of the Litho Lowdown Live. Um, this is uh, our once a month session. That's our chance to kind of show you what we've been working on over the previous month and give you the chance to um, ask us any questions that you might have. Uh, I am very lucky to be joined today by Chris Herndon, who is our Director of Product Management. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. Absolutely. I'm super glad to be here. And so <clears throat> very excited about this session. Um, we are we have been developing a lot of exciting new features that are coming your way very soon. You may have noticed a slightly lighter release month, and that's because the team has been hard at work. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of these features we're going to kind of give you um, insights into today have um, a common theme of solving some challenges and bottlenecks that we hear on a regular basis. Um, so going to dive right into our first bottleneck um, that we probably hear <laughs> the most, to be honest. Uh, it's no secret that stakeholders are not um, frequently in workflow. And this can cause a lot of bottlenecks in getting reviews um, reviewed in, in a timely manner and, you know, holding up your projects. Um, so, you know, to, to help with the buried review notifications um, in, in email boxes, uh, Chris, how are we going to solve for this? Yeah, so we've been working on an integrations initiative for the last few months. Um, and focusing on some of the highest uh, ap highest applications in your MarTech stack that we know you work with, um, including ourselves. Like we have Slack and we have Teams too, but we live our lives in Slack. And so this is one of those things that's immediately helping us internally too. I'm not the best at keeping up with my email, um, but when a notification comes in Slack, I'm, I see it. So what we've done is um, with these first integrations, we wanted to hit um, a, a valuable area, and this is obviously a valuable area where we can push a notification out to um, user stakeholders and get them easily into your reviews. The same way you would with with, with uh, emails, but just in the place where you're living all day long. Um, so if you want to go to the, what these look like a little bit, um, we're really excited about this. We we know we have a long way to go from an integration action standpoint, but out of the gate, we wanted to provide something that that had high value. Um, and we thought this would be the, the best place to start. Um, so for Slack and Teams, they both behave the same way. Um, uh, anytime, a anytime a reviewer is invited, uh, the same way, we, same way that we get an email notification or an in-app notification, we push a notification to these platforms. Um, so uh, the way it's going to work is uh, for Slack, uh, there's an app, there's a Litho app, and um, we are matching up users from Litho to users in these platforms based on um, uh, email address. So we look up the user and we push that notification to the app. Uh, Teams works the same way. Um, when the application is configured, you can select the team, um, everyone or a specific team, and then set the channel you want these notifications to go to. But they, after that, they they operate the same exact way. Um, so this is the beginning of this. We expect to um, get some good feedback and, and learn how valuable it is and which directions we should go. We know that both of these platforms are critical for your communications, just like they are for us. And so eventually we want to be able to build in more notification types or even two-way communication between these and work items in LIFO. That's the goal. Um, but we needed to lay the groundwork and get the connections and, and, and just basically learn how to how to properly get these integrations working best uh, at, a, at a basic level and, and do several of them and make sure we knew what we were doing and that, that it was going to work the way we intended. And then that gives us the basis to start building on top. So we have a lot more to come here, but we think this is pretty valuable right out of the gate. Super exciting stuff. Yes, we've been, we've gotten to, to use this internally and it's helped a ton. Um, and so we do have a couple of questions coming in. One from anonymous attendee um, that asked if the chat feature is disabled and feel free to just use that Q&A portion as, as our chat for today. 
Um, and then Kristen asks, is this a manual change that stakeholders will have to update or is that something that we as admins can set in the notifications area? So for this first set of integrations, you, you'll have the ability to make the connection to your platform of choice, whichever one of these you're going to use. Um, it's an account level integration. So once it's established, the app will be installed or added to your uh, to either Slack or Teams. Um, so notifications hit that app, but only for the users that are um, users based on their email address, right? So there's no control on our end to turn it on or off, except that the integration as a whole. But right for now, we still have access. You still have the ability to control notifications within Slack or within Teams. So that's where we'll focus at first. We know we expected questions like this. How do I want to get all of my? I would like to get all my notifications in Slack instead of email or vice versa. Um, we're working on that. We've been doing research in that area, and we're trying to figure out the most streamlined way to to move in that direction. But out of the gate, we wanted to get some get this in front of you and, and get that feedback um, first. So um, everybody who's in Slack, if you're if you uh, are invited to approve, you're going to get notified in this app. Um, and then Rebecca asks, kind of similarly, will these notifications have the same setting options that email notifications currently do? Um, yeah, not out of the gate, not yet. Since we're only focused on the one review notification and not all types of notifications yet, we, um, this is a very specific and targeted one. So um, we haven't made it available for configuration at the user level just yet, but we're working on that. And Rebecca, so this will just be if you are invited to a review. Correct. Um, and most of the time, those are those are the notifications that we definitely want people to get. Okay. And then Ross asks, do you have to have SSO turned on for this to work? Uh, no, um, this is this is an integration between our application and your instance. So the only limitation there is that obviously you need to have someone uh that can enable the app within slacker teams that's the that's the one thing that's required but that is a streamlined process so on our end when you turn it on and you connect um if you don't have the credentials to enable that app um usually a notification through slack goes to an admin to say hey we've re somebody's requested this app please turn it on um, that's the only friction between those two things, but um, it's a pretty easy login configuration turn on. It's it's there. Um, so um, there is a, within the actual integration, when you get to this point, you'll see um, the configuration. So you can see how it's logged in and connected. And there is a toggle for the actual notification. We only have one action right now built into that. So turning it off would effectively turn off the integration, but that's where we're trying to determine the best way to manage the workflows and actions that we build on top of that. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. And Kristen asks if this is available immediately and if not, when it will be available. Um, um, yeah. And I'll just say, um, so a lot of what you're going to see today is not yet not yet available, um, but it is coming. We're showing it to you now because it's coming so soon. So we want you to get very excited about all this stuff so that um, once it is released, you can really hit the ground running. Um, yep, we're working on communications and, and training as we speak. So look forward to hopefully in the month of, month of November for sure. Super soon. This is going to be a busy month, y'all. Um, and then Kristen also asks if this is free. And it is, it is um, available. Um, it comes with the business and enterprise um, suites. So um, if you have a starter account, it will not be available, but otherwise it's, it's free and available. All right, great questions. Um, getting very excited for this one. We're gonna move on to our next bottleneck. Um, and so this is in a very similar vein, right? We know a lot of you are working with IT and web teams and they are not always, they don't always have access to workflow or they're not in it very often, but you need to be able to collaborate and ensure that um, they're completing the tasks that need to be created to get projects over the line. Um, and so, Chris, how are we going to solve for this one? 
Yeah, so I'm gonna, we're going to stay on the integrations theme. Like I said, we uh, had an initiative to look across the board um, at all the applications that you were requesting integrations with and scenarios, um, use cases where you you need information um, between different applications. Jira was a big one. Um, we use Jira internally at Litho for product and development, so we're keenly aware of how important it is to be able to um, sync up with your stakeholders or sync up with other people in the organization. Um, so we looked for, um, while we were establishing the connection to JIRA and working through the actual integration piece, what's the highest value thing we can do in that integration? Um, and it looks like being able to sync a task or push a task in this case, um, out of the gate, what we want to do is give you the ability to, if you have one of those IT or web team tasks that you that you have, to be able to push it over to JIRA. Um, and then we're going to continue to build on top of this. There's a theme here that um, I'll touch on, but integrations is a big big place to call it out. We want to be able to get value out to you as quickly as possible right now. And so that's the goal with this, uh, with this was to be able to say, okay, there's a lot we can do between JIRA and, and Litho going forward. Um, but out of the gate, just getting um, necessary work in front of the right people is is the biggest is the biggest one we can um, push out of the gate. So let's let's look at a little bit of what that looks like. So here's a task in uh, in Litho, um, and we're gonna all the things you see highlighted are the data elements that we are going to push over to Slack. And the ellipsis menu you don't see it here, but you have the ability to manually say push to um, sorry not Slack push to Jira, um, and so name description. Um, the due date, the assignees or members on the task, and the status, as well as files and attachments. So the pertinent information that you might need to get over to those teams, um, we give you the ability to push it over. So if you go to the next screen, you would see what those look like in a JIRA task. Um, and so this is the groundwork. This is the beginning of this. And we want to, um, we're still in research and development to find ways to add more elements to that syncing, um, be able to write statuses back into Litho, maybe even comment threads back into Litho to that, to that object. Um, that's all still in development, but we didn't want to hold up what we thought was really good value here and, uh, and see how it works. We want to get some feedback from you all. Um, who are in JIRA and see if this works for you and it solves that problem. Um, but we know that getting getting these tasks in front of the right teams is, is critical for a lot of your work. So that's where we are. Love it. Very great question from Kristen. Does this integration require Zapier? No. Um, this is a direct integration between us and JIRA. Um, there, it's a little smoother actually than setting up for uh, some other applications. Jira makes it really easy. Um, the flip side of that is syncing data back from Jira into Litho is a little bit of um, is a little bit more work for us um, because you have to do some work on that end of the integration. Um, so we're we're trying to work through those issues now. But no, this will be direct. Uh, as soon as you connect it, you can sync a task, and it'll end up in your in your over in Jira. Obviously, the configurations matter, right? So you might you'll have to select the project that you want it to go to, and there's, but I think those will be um, pretty easy to work through once you see how it connects. Mm -hmm. um, and good question from Andrea. She says she popped on a little bit late. Is this only from Litho to Jira, but not Jira to Litho? Correct. Correct. For now, <clears throat> we are we are still in development of that. Um, two way action. <clears throat> Some of that is it's it's easier for us to get the connection built and push data out. Writing back means we need to be able to have the pieces in place to accept that data and route it to the right right place inside of our inside of our system. Um, parts of that are in, in place and we're still in development there, but um, we're gonna keep building on. The whole idea here is eventually to get it a, to be a true sync. We want that communication going two ways. The same way we do with Slack and Teams, like the whole idea is eventually, um, and hopefully soon we'll be able to start doing some of that stuff, but we didn't wanna hold up um, good increments of value. So that's where we are. Perfect. And Brandon, I believe that answers your question as well. And then Kristen asks, would it, would this require work from our IT team to, I believe, set up? Um, it might. Well, um, we'll get into that when you get, when we get ready to roll this out and do the communications. We'll have some training around that uh, and best practices. Um, it depends on how your JIRA instance is set up. So it depends on how complex it is or how your projects are uh, established and what sort of permissions you have to those projects based on the login that you're using to make the connection with. So there's some technical pieces to it, but we don't think that'll be a, a, a difficult 
hurdle. Um, we got it up and running in our system pretty quickly um, without much effort. And we think that'll probably be the case across the board, but um, we'll work through those details and get them communicated out as soon as we're ready to deploy this. Um, great stuff. Thank you, Chris. And thank you for all the excellent questions, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we're going to move on to our next bottleneck. Um, so again, kind of similarly, uh, your stakeholders are not always in workflow. Um, and so they're not as used to the application. Sometimes finding the exact request form they need can be difficult. Sometimes those lists are long. Um, and sometimes you just want to be able to send them a link to the request form, um, <laughs> which is a bit of a spoiler in how we are solving for this. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is an exciting one for us. This falls in the category of something we've been asked that's been asked for a long time, um, and we just couldn't get it prioritized or uh, had to think through what's the best uh, and easiest way to accomplish this. Um, it turns out that it was um, once we dove in and started working on it, it was relatively low effort. Right there was some there was some streamlined ways we could accomplish this, but it provided huge value. So we know how important it is and how difficult it is sometimes to get people to the right request form. Um, so this is going to make that super easy. Um, I'm going to let uh, Natalie demo it for us. But yes, yeah. this is coming so soon that, yeah, we actually get to show this to you guys um, live. So um, as you can see, I am currently inside templates and I'm in the forms section of templates. So over here in this more actions um, menu, I now have the ability to copy request link. Um, this check, part, check mark lets me know that it is um, in, my, in my clipboard. Um, and now I can go, you know, send it wherever I want, whatever resources, uh, Slack, Teams, email, um, and anybody, anybody who has access to this area is going to have the ability to copy those uh, request links. Um, and I do want to show you just an example of how you can use this. Uh, so over here, I'm in the Lytho Dam in my brand guidelines, and I have decided to add a section down here for creative requests. Um, so here, my stakeholders, you know, they could see the brand brand guidelines and then come down and know, okay, to submit a digital request, I click here, print, or update to existing media. Um, so when I click in here, if I have not signed in, I will be prompted to sign in. Um, only people, you know, who have access to Litho and these request forms um, can access this. And so I'm just gonna show you guys what this looks like. All right. And so then right here, it's the, the flow that everybody is, is familiar with. Um, I'm right in that request form that I meant to be in. I do have the ability from here to update that request form, um, but makes it really simple to, to just get where I need to go. Yeah, um, this is there's a little bit of theme here. Um, we want your feedback. Uh, these are areas where we're trying to provide immediate value, but know that we can continue to improve upon it. So any ideas you have about how or use cases where you might be putting your putting these links to these requests would be good for us to know so we can think through um, those challenges and come up with even better ways to make this work. Um, we already have talked internally about making it so that you can share it. If you're, if you're in a form or you have a request that you can share that request form with somebody else the same way. Um, so out of the gate, you'll, you'll be able to pick up that link through the form templates, but we're looking for other ways to expand this. Um, so any feedback uh, would be great. Uh, but we know, we think this will be super valuable immediately because now you can send your send your requesters directly where they need to go. Exactly. And Kristen, I believe that answers um, your question, Justin, that um, only users with the ability to access those templates will be able to copy um, the link. But anybody with access to the forms can, of course, um, access the forms via the link. Yeah, there is a little bit of a, um, we, if you don't have, if 
the user does isn't invited or has access to that particular form, they get an error that says you don't have access to it. Um, but we try to make that as smooth as possible and get them back to where they need to go. Um, but for everyone who's at, you know um, who has access, it's a pretty seamless or pretty streamlined process to get right in and, and make that request. Amazing. And again, look for this very very soon, maybe Monday. I don't see any other questions currently. So we're going to move on to the next bottleneck. Um, and this is something that is currently available. And uh, we have talked about a couple of times, but I think it's it's worth pulling into this theme because um, this is really for your, your designers and the bottlenecks they face um, with the frustration of broken or missing links when trying to share work or go into files that they might not own. Um, and so, Chris, how are we solving for this? Yeah, you may have heard about the Link Sync Connector, Litho Link Sync Connector for a few months now. Um, or or uh, This makes it really easy. I think it solves that problem of uh, having local assets. And if you're, cha if you're sharing in design files, um, you know, having to have the file of that other person's um, computer. Um, this gives gives you that direct connection to the dam. So once the uh, the plugin is added, um, you'll see here where you can open up the dam and select the asset um, from InDesign, and then that link is permanent in that um, InDesign file. So from that point on, you don't have to um, worry about uh, you know dealing with those those local files. You can um, uh, reference the dam file directly and you'll see it there um how it's pointing to your to your dam got um, it and this was yeah. highly requested so we're very excited to see it out in the wild and being used now yes um okay we're gonna go on to our final um bottleneck of the session um and this is a huge one i'm very excited about this so um, in your asset manager, you know, a lot of search results are dependent on tags and um, naming conventions, and that's prone to human error. Um, and also sometimes you just can't get all the information you need in, in metadata. So we're seeing oftentimes, you know, stakeholders are going in searching, not finding what they need, even though it does exist, um, you know, and then giving up, you know, trying to create something themselves or putting in a request that's unnecessary. Um, so how are we going to solve for this? Yeah, this one's uh, really, really exciting. Um, this is our first um stab at, at real AI in the app in the platform. Um, and uh, I was hoping we could show you a live demo. We are so close to getting this rolled out that it's actually in testing in QA right now. And I did want to slow the team down trying to stand up a, an instance for us to demo this. But we do have some, we do have a screenshot so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Um, the idea here is to enhance your ability to find assets in the dam. But it's also opening the door for a lot of other things that we want to do in the near future. Um, so what you see here in front of you um, in the search bar um, gives us a little bit more, gives you a little more capability to find things. Um, so, for example, um, with traditional search and the search that it that currently works in the dam, um, it would search these assets, and these are just example assets, um, by title or by tag, metadata associated with them. So if you search for, you know, if the if dog was in the title of that first image there, obviously it would find it easily there. But if you were looking for a window or a plate or glass, um, that might not be in the title or metadata of that of that image. So um, what this does is it indexes, uh, it does um, you know, uh, image recognition and indexes all of those uh, words um, that might be associated with these and then gives confidence score and returns uh, values or returns the assets that matches match closest to that. So um, it's fairly straightforward to understand, but it's going to be, we think it's going to be hugely powerful. And it's also the beginning of what we, we know we can build with this. 
um, the AI will does give us the ability to do to go further down that path. So not just recognizing things within the images and then surfacing them uh, based on words, but also facial recognition, hopefully down the road and um, OCR. So if there's if there's text inside of images, it can find that those are all capabilities we're still in, in research and development on. But we want to expand into that field. There's there's, um, you know, modeling and training those models. Um, and we want to make that experience make sense within the dam. So that's what we're working on now. But out of the gate, this is another thing where um, it provides value because you'd be able to search for things that you might not have had tagged or built metadata around. Um, and you should, should be able to surface those images faster and then, you know, help with organizing, right? You can, then you can go from there and work in your taxonomy a little bit easier or, you um, or, or whatever you're doing to, to better organize these collections. We think it's going to be a huge help and speed up that um, finding of assets in the dam. Yes, I just want to say I love this use of AI because it's helping with those, you know, administrative tasks that take us away from creating rather than um, creating for us. It gives us more time back to, to create and do the things that we want to do. Um, so we do have a couple questions. Ross asks, when will this be added to the workflow system? Um, that's a good question. We're, we're talking about that. Um, we have, uh, as uh, at Litho, we are in the process of, of standing up an AI council to really dive into all the places we can start to bake AI deeply into the platform across everything. Workflow is one of those areas and search is one of the areas we talked about. Um, it's a little bit different uh, implementation because this is an image recognition and um, more extensive or AI driven search within uh, workflow would be a little bit more involved, but it's definitely on the radar um, as is um, what we think, what I believe could be even a bigger help in a, in on workflow is in analyzing your data. So, um, we're, we haven't, we aren't talking about it in this Litho, Litho Lowdown Live, but we will be soon. You may have seen it at Lithopia. Um, we talked about data insights, um, that's still in development and there are some fun things we think we can do with that, um, with that platform once we're able to roll it out that lead us in that direction, right? So we'll be able to hopefully in the future um, embed AI in deeper parts of the application and across the platform, workflow included. Um, but this is the place for us to learn first and we want, we're want we not gonna hold it up. We wanna get this out there as fast as possible and then get some feedback like that and, and start to build in other parts of the platform. Love it. And uh, Donna has a good question. If you use the AI search, can it not find images that some groups shouldn't have access to? There are some assets that only small groups should have access to, and we wouldn't want AI to override that. Yeah, uh, that's a good question um, um, and good feedback. Well, uh, I'm going to say that the search mechanism that we're using follows the same rules that we that we would follow now. So whatever you have access to, it, that permissioning doesn't change. And in fact, all we're doing is actually using AI to enhance the existing search mechanism. So the, the open search process that we're that we're doing, which does do some machine learning, right? Um, it's always done some level of this type of deep learning to find things. Um, the difference is that the AI is analyzing images. So that so all it's really doing is build building up a much larger index for the searching to to do but that still is limited and controlled by our permissioning system. So um, I'm gonna say out of the gate, no, but that's definitely something I will follow up on to make sure we're, we're adhering to. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions come in at the moment. And I will say, um, you've got our, our director of product management on here. So if you have any any other fun questions, now's your chance. Um, so we'll let that stew stew for a moment. And I know I know Chris um, that a lot of these had had a theme um, that you wanted yeah. to speak to a little bit. Yeah, I uh, um, as we were going through this and talking through all the things that we're getting ready to release and stuff that we've been working on for months now. Um, I wanted to be able to call out and I've said it a bunch of times, but I'll say it again. We want to be able to get value in front of you as quickly as possible. 
um, for two reasons. One, we think it obviously solves a problem for you immediately, but also we want that feedback. So we want to know, and what other ways can we build on top of this? Integrations is a very easy way to start and think about that because there's so much we can do with all these different applications. But just establishing the connection is the hardest part of that process. Um, and we think we've solved that with the platform we built um, so that we can start to look at other applications we can integrate with faster. We know how to make those connections a little bit easier now. And for the ones that we've already established, um, uh, it, we the theory is that building more actions on top, it gets faster and faster and faster because we don't have to solve for the same problems again. So that's a small example of that. But in all the things we talked about today, we know and I know there's more we can do with each one of these features. There's more we can accomplish and there's deeper places we can go with them throughout the platform. But I want to be able to get as uh, incremental units of value in front of you as fast as possible. And so from a product team and development team, that's how we're focusing um, right now. And then this is a good example of that. And then there's a lot more of that coming um, uh, in December and at the beginning of the year where um, we've got a lot of exciting things coming um, and we want to show how we're able to start to identify the problem, come up with a solution and it might not be all encompassing. It might not be the, 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 the final solution that we would come up with for solving numbers of problems in that area, but it does provide value and can solve many of your issues immediately. So let's get it, let's get it to you while we continue to build on top of that. And honestly, is anything ever really done? No, exactly. <laughs> I hope not. Um, all right. So now we've got some good questions coming in. Um, Donna asks if we're going to send out a quick summary of these advancements so that um, you, know, you guys can share with your team. And yes, I do have a follow-up email that you guys will see that's going to kind of quickly list what we talked about um, with the recording. Keep in mind that these are not yet available, but you will start to see them soon. And of course, we'll provide communications and um, all, all of the great materials uh, you know and love um, with each release. Um, and then Ross asks if there's any movement on making the system mobile friendly. Um, yes, uh, in some ways. Uh, we have uh, our new review and approval environment is, is getting close to rolling out to all of you. We're trying to um, work through the final pieces of that. We talked about it for a while now, and you've seen the preview of it in your um, request file markup tool um, that's going to take over our reviews environment, uh, hopefully very, very soon. Um, that is mobile friendly, and the learnings we're taking from that and the, the UI development that went into that, well, we're already starting to talk about how to extend that across the rest of the platform. So nothing quite yet, but we are definitely in the works and in the design phase to figure out how to how to start moving some of that capability across the platform uh, in better ways. It's going to take a little while. It's, that's not an easy problem to solve, um, but it's definitely on our radar and something we're going to address quickly as we can. Right. And then Kristen, coming in hot. I love all of your questions today. Um, a big question. What other product developments can we expect in the next six months, 12 months? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we get a lot of that internally, too. Um, uh, it's hard to say on the horizon, like too far off on the horizon. Let's not let's not look too far off. We're focused on the now and providing as much value as we can. Um, I can say the stuff that's on our roadmap and some of the things we've talked about and you'll see in some of your SBRs um, is uh, data visualizations and insights is, is going to come um, soon. Um, we are in the uh, we are in the development phase where we are starting to plug in production data to those to that system. Um, insights will be uh, a dashboard um, with charts and graphs. Um, uh, in the first phase of that, we're still trying to work out the details on exactly what we're going to what we're going to present, but we already have the place where inside the dashboard where we're going to surface it. Um, it's running on top of a, a data warehouse or data lake behind the scenes that we are currently like today um, loading with production data. And so we can start to um, uh, look at how those dashboards look with real production data instead of really bad development data. Um, that's where we are now. Um, hopefully we're going to push forward through that, uh, push that 
effort through the end of the year we're trying to come up with some target dates where we can start to show you that stuff but um we're starting to work with it internally and we're really excited about that one um i think that's going to provide huge value so start to look for that towards the end of the year maybe early next year um when we can um get that in front of you um past that uh we've got a lot of things in the works and a lot of ideas um but our focus is on the problems that you all have and how we can best solve them. So um, I won't reveal, I can't reveal too much because some of that is changes and is fungible and it's going to take some time to develop. But I will say we are learning a lot from our Divi acquisition um, with Divi joining the team um, and that team working side by side with the developers, product development on our, at least in my, on my side of the shop. Um, uh, to understand the the core offerings that, that that Divi brings to the marketplace and what that means for Litho in the future, how we can capture that uh, that value across the platform and start getting content marketing teams working closer with with the creative teams. Like that's a big problem we're trying to solve right now, and and uh, I would look for some of that in the in next year for sure. I think that's a area where it's no secret that's where we want to be able to take the company and where we think there's where there's a lot of upside is getting the entire marketing department inside of litho and working together that's the problem we're trying to solve with playing create form all right and you did um i feel like mostly answer this question from steve um who's asking about the metrics dashboard and mm -hmm. If we think that that will be available for end of year reporting, um, we'll see. Um, I I would love for it to. It depends on how fast the next month to six weeks goes for us, and how much we can get done um, to get that ready for you all. Um, uh, it was a it was a heavy lift to get the data in the right place. So that's been the um, challenge in that whole platform, or that side of the platform is getting our um, data in a reportable way. And we're also thinking about it holistically. We wanna be able to eventually put um, your the entire platform's data in one place for reporting. So workflow will be what we're focused on out of the gate because we think that's the biggest impact. But there's data metrics we want to be able to start pulling into that system. Um, Divi and their uh, uh, data analytics system, we want to be able to capture some of that in there. Um, and review and approval, the reviews environment is part of workflow, but there's statistics and data we think we can maybe provide there too that dovetails with the, with the workflow data. All that's to say we are in the process of getting that data in place. And if that goes smoothly, maybe we'll have some at least some sneak peeks. Um, uh, I can't promise anything just yet, but man, I would love to be able to get you your in stats on some charts before the end of the year for sure. And something to keep in mind, we do frequently have early access programs. So if there's something you see that you're really excited about and want to, um, you know, get your hands on it sooner, let us know, let your CSM know um so that you can potentially uh start trying it out yeah i will say for the some of the metrics that we're um looking at building within those dashboards um uh they a lot of them are time bound right so we are we're um want to stay as close to the similar types of metrics you see in our strategic business reviews the year over year stats your improvement this year versus net versus last year so we'll definitely, out of the gate, those dashboards will be um, a lot of time components built into them um, so that you can see your progress over the year um, for sure. As soon as we can get it out there, we will. Love it. Um, and another one that we touched on, but I think worth coming back to, Mark says, these are all great enhancements. Thank you, Mark. Um, looking forward to working with them. Beyond what was shown, are there any updates on the review tool overhaul? Um, yeah, we didn't have a lot of talking points to point to that. Um, we are in the process. We, we have it in early access, so we have a handful of customers that are using it right now. Um, I can say that what we are in the process of rolling out are additional features um, that get us closer to parity with the existing reviews environment, so more annotation tools. Um, those, those things are being rolled out every, every um, release right now. Um, and as soon as we get to the point where we feel like, okay, we've, we, we can provide the same value that the current reviews tool does 
and start to talk about how do we um, migrate it over for everybody, we'll start doing that and start, you'll start seeing that communication very, very soon. I think within November, um, December timeframe, we're going to start, we're going to start talking about what that process looks like, but we are like, as of we as as a as we speak, we are deploying updates to that rapidly now as we get sort of to where we think the finish line is. Um, and our goal is to get to general availability as quickly as possible um, by the end of the year. Um, and so, yeah, it's coming. It's it's really, really close on that. It's going to be a big splash for us in December, I think. Yes. Um, great. And definitely join us for December's Litho Lowdown Live. I think we'll be able to um, really dive deeper into that functionality at that point. Um, and Jason says that they are using it now and it's 98% there. That's pretty a pretty close. great grade. It'll, it'll be even a little closer after tomorrow's rollout. Yeah. After be 110% there once you guys get it, once everybody gets it. All right. Well, I do not see any more questions coming in. Um, thank you all so much for... Oh, <laughs> All right, one more. That I feel like that always happens. That's why I always say the the outro slowly because as soon as I start to, um, Karen has a question. Da -da. Let's see. Can we set up separate companies or brands in the tool to keep their respective projects totally separate yet provide a high level dashboard view for C level execs? Good question. Uh, it's food for thought. Uh, um, we're we're still trying to establish what those dashboards look like. So, um, ideally, yes. Uh, the ultimate uh, I can speak to. I can't speak to exactly what we'll be able to put out there uh, in the first phase, but I can talk at a high level about what our overall goals are for that um, that initiative or that feature. Um, our goal is to be able to put analytics in your hands and give you the ability to set those dashboards up um, that make sense for you. Um, we're trying to take an iterative approach to that um, for two main reasons. One is to test that the technology is going to provide the value that we think it will um, uh, out of the gate. And then there's more work to expand that canvas, let's say to allow you to start to create your own analytics. Um, and in that regard, you, you could control it however you want. Um, that's the whole idea here is to give as much data and capabilities to you and put it in your hands as possible and then allow those dashboards to be shared. Um, I will say, uh, uh, without showing you, I'll give you a little bit of insight in how we're thinking about it. Um, we're looking at some um, you know, predefined dashboards to begin with, but in specific areas, right? Projects, campaigns, reviews, work requests, um, and then the ability to, to filter them. Uh, so you can um, save views of them from a filtering perspective that makes sense for you um, and then save that off. And so you could have multiple uh, uh, filters saved for those particular dashboards. And in that respect, you could make it wide open or limit the limit what is being um, filtered with across those different uh, charts and graphs within the dashboard. That's kind of how we're playing with it right now. Um, we think that'll probably address what you're what you're getting at. And but the overall goal in the long run is to is to give you as much functionality and capabilities as possible. Um, we're not going to try to, um, um, you know, tighten that down too much over the long run. I, I want to be able, I want you to be able to answer whatever questions you need to answer with your data. And we're going to, we're going to make that possible. Love it. Thank you, Chris. Sure. All right. I believe we're, we're at the end of our time here. Thank you all so much for spending part of your Friday with us. You guys already know this is my, my favorite day of the month. Um, and we will be back in December to show you guys even, even more. A lot of this at that point is going to be um, released. So we're going to get to go through full demos, really talk about best practices. Um, so be sure to join us then. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. And thank you, Chris, for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you.